Hello, a very good evening to all of you. Uh, happy Chinese New Year for those of you who are celebrating Chinese New Year, and I uh, hope you have a ho uh, good holiday for those who are not celebrating Chinese New Year. And first of all, I want to thank everybody for coming to our webinar today. And this webinar is the fifth webinar series that is uh, organized by Busan Malaysia, and it's called the Basic Technical Analysis. Now, before I begin further, I just want to check whether my audio is working well or not. So, on your control panel, on the right, there should be a button for you to raise your hand. If you can hear me clearly, would you please click raise the hand button? If you can hear me clearly, would you please click raise the hand button? Okay, awesome. I see some of the hands now. I see there are a couple of people not raising hand yet. Okay. For those of you using mobile, I think you might not be able to raise your hand, I suppose. All right, so you can all now put down your hands. I think majority of you can hear me very clearly. All right, you can now put down your hands. Okay, great, thank you. So without further ado, let's uh, get it started. Now, my name is Chun Xian. I am the uh, director of LiveChan, and I will be the host and the sp speaker for this webinar series. For the past four uh, sessions, I've invited a speaker to talk about fundamental analysis, value investing, introduction to stock market, and in this fifth session, we will talk about master the chart, how you can see the price action, how you can see the support resistance, how you can use basic technical analysis skills to help you to time your entry and time your exit. For the past four sessions, we have done introduction to stock market, master the game of stock, understanding market indices and sector, master fundamental analysis in value investing, and today we are talking about basic technical analysis, and the next sessions, which is next month, we'll talk about choosing the right investment strategies. So it will be a monthly seminar series and we are already in the fifth webinar series. And I suppose some of you here would have been to our previous four sessions and see some familiar names. And for those of you who are new, no worries, uh, this session will be uh, 60, about 60 over minutes for the, the tr uh, webinar sessions and another 30 minutes is uh, span for the question and answer sessions. So in the event that you have any questions, you can type in the chat box, question box, I will be able to respond to it during the Q&A sessions. Now in case I overshoot that, I will cut short the Q&A by 10 to 20 minutes. So depending on how far I progress. So let me give you a little bit about my background. Uh, I've been involved in uh, trading and investing when I was 19 years old. When I first started trading, I was uh, trading currency first at the start, then eventually I move on to stock market. I also go to derivative market uh, options in the New York, uh, in the American stock exchange. So, but subsequently I uh, believe that I have a passion in doing this, so I come out and share my experience with others on how to do trading. I was also subsequently invited to TV to share my experience in uh, financial education for youth, money management, personal financial planning, and also investor education on the media and on the newspaper as well. So I wouldn't say I'm the expert, but I guess I have a fair understanding about the chart and have a fair understanding about price actions. All right, so uh, we'll, we shall begin our webinar today. Now for you to learn to evaluate a security, whether how, uh, how uh, valuable it is, there are only two ways for you to do that. The first way you can do a market analysis is through what we call fundamental analysis. Now fundamental analysis is basically uh, the study of the financial statements, uh, the balance sheet, see how wealthy is the company, the income statement to see how healthy is the company, and the cash flow statement to see how, what is the condition of the company. Now by identifying and studying fundamental analysis, you will be able to pick and choose the stocks that is worth the price. So fundamental analysis basically tells you what to buy. And if you are traders, you may not need to rely so much on a fundamental analysis. Basically, you need another skill, which is called the technical analysis. So in Chinese, it's called Su Fen Si. So what does this technical analysis entail? Now, under the topics of technical analysis, there are multiple topics. It basically involves you understanding about a chart 
patterns. So uh, we have support resistance, which is the most basic one. We have moving averages, which a lot of uh, people are using. And we have different indicators, the relative strength indicators, the oscillators, or non downer oscillators. We have the chart patterns, the head and shoulders pattern, the double, uh, double tops, double dot bottoms, the cow and handle patterns, the inverse head and shoulder, the triangles pattern and so on. And fifth, we also have candlestick patterns. Candlestick pattern basically go down to every little hour or every little daily uh, pattern. We have um, we have a lot of candlestick pattern like a hammer, a shooting star, evening stars, a harami pattern, bullish engulfing, bearish engulfing, and so on. So there are a lot of candlestick patterns for you to learn. And we also have few ones here, retracement. We have either wave theory. We have Dow theory. We have uh, regressions, line analysis. So we have a lot of things, uh, topics under technical analysis. For you to truly master the charts, it will take a lot of time and hours put into it to understand. Now today we are going to touch very introductory for you to learn how to do a basic technical analysis. So we are not talking about advanced tools today. We are just talking about how to see the price actions by understanding the basic support resistance and moving average and the volume. So this is some of the things that we will cover today. So today talk about basic of technical analysis, market structure, volume, support resistance, how do you trade uh, breakout and sideways using support resistance and moving average. So we will just cover about the six uh, modules today in a short hour. All right, so let's talk about the basic. What is technical analysis? Now basically technical analysis is the attempt to forecast prices on the basis of market driven uh, market derived data such as price, volume, and so on. So it's like you look at this pattern. You see the trend, um, the hexagon pattern, and then you try to predict what would be the last pattern. All right. So we take the technical analysis from the hexagon context to a chart context. So you tr by understanding the chart and the price action over a historical period of time. You try to predict or anticipate whether the price of the security will go up or will go out or will go down later on. So by understanding the price actions and by understanding the, a little bit about the support resistance, you try to gauge or estimate, anticipate whether the price will go up or go down later on. So that's a little bit about technical analysis using patterns recognition. So there are about three basic assumptions under technical analysis. The first assumption is the market discounts everything. Now what does it mean? Now there are different investors and different traders uh, around the world. There are some investors who really rely on fundamental aspect of the company solely and they don't look into uh, price action, they don't look into chart at all. And there are also technical analysts who only look at charts and they don't look at fundamental at all because they believe the first assumption which is the market discounts everything. The pure chartist or we call it pure technical analyst, they only look at the price because they believe that the price has already reflected what has already been happened earlier. For example, if in the morning the company reported a very good quarterly earnings results, then the price has already been moved. So the price has already been moved. If the company has announced a negative news, there's a negative headline surrounding the company, and the stock chances are the stock prices already go down. So some pure technical analysts, they don't bother to look at technical. They don't bother to look at fundamental, I'm sorry. They don't bother to look at fundamental because they, they believe that the price of the security has already factored in into the news or the, the quarterly reports result. So they believe that the price moves so fast that it has discount everything. All right, so that's the first basic assumptions. So the second basic assumptions is the price move in trends. So they don't believe that the, 
the price of a security move in what we call the Brownian motions, random. You know, it doesn't move in random, it moves in trends. It moves in trend by following a certain pattern, a certain uh, style, and that's what they believe in. The third is history tends to repeat itself. We believe that humans being are the same. And when these things happen, chances are most people, most traders will make this kind of decision. So they believe that the history will repeat itself. They believe that the cycle will repeat itself. Because the fundamental basis is that all humans have a psychology and we tend to trade use uh, based on our psychology as well. So that's why the history tends to repeat itself. All right, so these are three basic assumptions of the technical uh, analyst. So let's look at what uh, technical analysis can help you to achieve. Now, if you look at this chart from Norman Forsback, it shows that how market timing can benefit your returns. If you are just a value investor, so from 1964 to 1984, if you just buy and hold of the S&P 500, the average grains is about 11.46% per year. So your 10,000 US dollars will grow to 87,500 US dollars at the end of 1984. If you're a pure value investor, you buy and you hold it for 20 years and you sell, your the annual, the compound annual growth rate will be 11.46%. But if you're a little bit smarter, you know how to look at uh, charts, you avoid the bear market, that means before the bear market hits, you get out, you sell all your securities, you will be able to make 21.48% return. So your 10,000 US dollar will have grown to 489,700 US dollar by the end of 1984. Can you imagine that there's 21.48% return, compounded return per year? If you are a little bit more sharp, that means if you look at the charts every day, you are a trader, you are a full-time trader, and you can long and short major swings of the S&P 500, you will be able to make 27.99% annual return. And your 10,000s will have grown to 1 million, 1 1.3 million by the end of 1984. And if you are godlike, but which I believe none of us will be able to achieve that, not to mention about uh, including, I believe, Josh Soros, you are able to short and long every 5% swing in the market, you'll be able to achieve 93% return per year, which is ridiculously high. So let's assume you just buy and hold, you'll be able on average, make 11% per year. So what does technical analysis, uh, how can it reward you? By, by understanding how to look at a price action, you will be able to avoid the bear markets. When you're able to avoid the bear markets, you can uh, multiply, multiply your returns and make and beat the in industry average and the market average. So, so being able to understand the chart is very important because you can avoid a bear market and when the, when the economy turns, you'll be able to benefit tremendously. So that's why I believe that uh, everybody has to learn about both sides of the skills so that you can get both fundamental the, the G's in fundamental analysis and also the G's in technical analysis to help you to amplify and multiply your return in your investment. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit, spend a little bit of time about understanding a chart. Now, I assume that uh, some of you here may not know or may not be familiar with the charts. Let's look at this chart. All right. First thing I want to share with you what, uh, how to look at this chart. So this is a chart that I got from a software that I use called Chanessus. So on the top left hand corner, it shows that KLS is the Kuala Lumpur Stock Exchange and it shows Maybank. Maybank is a stock that we buy. It's a, it's a stock that uh, you are looking at now. So it's the name of the security that you are looking at. 
So the top left hand corner show the name of security. And the right hand corner of the chart shows the price. And the bottom of the chart shows the volume. And uh, the volume is the historical bar. You, you see there's a histogram bra. So these are the volumes. And you see the time. You see September, no, October, uh, November, uh, December 2015. These are the timeline. So every, uh, every piece of the candlestick uh, represent one day. If you will allow me to draw, uh, let me use a highlighter. I'm not sure whether you can see. Uh, this uh, represent one day, right? This represent one day, and this represent the second day. So in this case, uh, this could probably be December second, right? This could probably be December second. The price is uh, it go up from nine ringgit ten cent to about nine ringgit uh, thirty cent and close at about nine ringgit twenty cent. For this bar, all right. So that's a little bit about. Uh, that's a little bit about the charts. So let's look at the market structure. The basically market has a few structure, three structures, all right. But we usually buy at the low, which, and sell at the high. And at this point, the circle is called trough. And if you sell at the high, it is called the peak. When you see a series of higher low and higher high, it is called an uptrend. Do you notice that the prior action is go moving outwards? And if you see a series of lower low and lower highs, it is called a downtrend. So downtrend basically is when the price is moving lower. And uptrend basically means the price is moving higher. And the third structure is where the price goes sideways, what we call is is ranging, or is in consolidation period, and this is usually a period where the investors come in and accumulate the the stocks, so the price doesn't move up and down too much, and it is consolidated within a certain price range. So this is what we call a sideways or a range or a consolidation period. So how do we make money? We buy low and sell high. All right. Now, everybody knows how to buy low and sell high, but the the matter of the fact is that a lot of people go to the market and they don't make money, even though they know they need to buy low and sell high. And this is easier said than done: buy low and sell high. All right. So I'm basically done with the um, the basic information about how to read the chart. Uh, what is uh, what information can you get from a chart? What is the market structure? Next, I would love to talk about the volume. Okay, what is the volume? Now, volume is simply the number of shares or contract that trade over a given period of time, usually a day. And the more active the security, the higher the volume. If you look at this chart, the bottom is the volume. All right. So in other words, if you look at this day, hang on, yeah, let me find my cursor. Where is my cursor? Okay. Oops. Okay, if you look at this day, you see there's a high histogram here, a bar here. It means that on that day, it has 20 over million people, 20 millions uh, transactions done on that day. There are some days the average volume is about this. This is the average volume, but there are some days where people are aggressively trading the contract. Uh, this is when you can see a long bar there. So the histogram below and the bar below means how many contracts are being traded over a certain period of time. And the more active the security, the higher the volume. Okay, let me go to the next page. So why is volume important in understanding uh, technical analysis? Because any price movement up or down with relatively high volume 
or above average volume is seen as a strong signal and a real movement. All right. Any price action with relatively weak volume is seen as weak. Uh, in other words, when a share price moves out too fast or too high, or it drops too, drop down, drop down too fast, but the volume is below average, it just means that the price action is unreliable. Okay, let me repeat. If the price move too fast, but the volume doesn't show above average, it just means that it is a weak signal. So this this breakout could be a false breakout, or the, tr the uptrend or the downtrend may not be sustainable in the long run. So that's why we need to look at the volume. Now volume can be used to spot the strength of a trend or a trend reversal. And divergence may happen when the tr prices are trending upward but volumes are declining. All right, so what does it mean? Huh? Divergence means that uh, when the price go upward, but the volumes are declining. So when uh, when you see that the price are showing uptrend, historically you see that the price is showing uptrend. When uh, let's say Maybank uh, for the last week is eight dollar, uh, the previous week is six dollar, or the maybe previously is five dollar fifty cent, and this week is eight dollar fifty cent. It's going higher. But unfortunately, the volumes are actually not increasing. The number of people trading in contract are actually reducing. But how come the price are going upwards? Right. So this is what we mean divergence. Divergence usually is a signal that the uptrend run is about to end. So if the volume is starting to decrease in an uptrend, it is usually a sign that the upward run is about to end. All right. And a solid breakout should have a large volume. Later, I'll show you what does it mean. In other words, when you see a breakout and accompanied by a low volume, it may most likely be a false breakout. Now, I haven't come to breakout yet, so you may just uh, give me a little bit more time to explain breakout to you later on. All right? So I basically cover about volume. So what is important to remember is the stronger the volume, the more likely that the signal is strong. Okay, so in the meantime, okay, there's no question asked as for now. Okay, let me move on. All right, hang on. So I pretty much with a uh, volume. So I'm now going to support and resistance. Now I'm sure that when you look at chart, sometimes you see that the price will converge or consolidate uh, within a certain range and it could be supported at a certain level and this is what we call support and resistance. Now resistance results from the inability to surpass prior highs and support results from the inability to break below prior lows. And when you see that the price actions surpass the prior highs is called a breakout. When you see the price action surpass or break through the uh, the prior high, the uh, the historical high, it is called a breakout. So sometimes uh, the price of a security move in this kind of fashion. So, but, but why does it happen? Now, these support resistance levels are seen as important in terms of market psychology and supply and demand. All right. Support resistance levels are the level at which a lot of traders are willing to buy the stock in the case of a support or sell it in the case of a resistance. And when these trend lines are broken, the, support, the supply and demand and the psychology behind the stock movement is thought to have shifted and in which, in which case new levels of support resistance will likely to be established. Right? So let me uh, examine, examine it in detail. Now let's look at support first. Now basically support level is a price level where price tends to find support as it's going down. So if we look at this chart, this is also Maybank. You can see that Maybank stock tend to find support at this level. 
you see uh in May uh, uh let me go to the my uh right, never mind. So if you see in May, sorry not in May, in March, the price is about nine ringgit and it starts to move out in April to about nine ringgit twenty cent and move up in uh, this is uh April twenty uh, and and then in uh, August twenty in July twenty thirteen it hits historical high and it started to move down and when the price moved down you see that the price tend to find support at a certain level that means it cannot break through that kind of price so when it comes in November twenty thirteen you see the price spotted at about nine ringgit fifty cent and we come at of January 2014, you see the price is spotted at 9 ringgit 45 cent, and then in March, the price fails to break through the 9 ringgit 40 cent, and then it was spotted again, and then in October, the price is supported again. So, so what you need to do as a trader is you find the 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 swing low, and you draw a line that connect most of them. And this become your support level. And remember, a support line may not be a line; it is a zone. So, in other words, uh, let's take this case as a, uh, as an example. When you see the Maybank price goes down to about nine ringgit fifty cent, you will see a lot of people buying it, and these buyers are preventing the stock prices from going below the nine ringgit. 40 cent this zone in other words there might be institutional investors or there might be a lot of retail investors who believe that 9 ringgit 40 cent or 9 ringgit 50 cent is the fair price for them to go in and why why we talk about support resistance as the psychological level because people like us human beings tend to have emotions so when uh, let's look at let's look at let me find my highlighter all right let's look at uh, let's not use a highlighter let's look use a pen okay let's look at here okay when you see the sh uh, share price uh, move down to about 9 ringgit 50 cent and people who buy at 9 ringgit 60 cent or 9 ringgit 50 cent and sell here are probably very happy about it they could probably have made about 40 cent per share all right they buy here and then they sell here okay and when the price go down from 10 ringgit to about 9 ringgit 50 cent again guess what the same traders would have seen the opportunity would have this kind of memory uh, uh, you no know, human emotions are basically driven by these two emotions first is uh, the, the, the the pleasure of achieving a certain things the second is the pain so when they come back here they would remember that two months ago they buy at this price and they sell at this price they make money so chances are what happened when they see the price deep, uh, goes down to discounted price which is 9 ringgit 50 cent they will most likely say hey there's another chance for me to make money again so I'm going to buy at this level okay and when they buy at this level they wait and then they sell at this level again okay that's how support resistance happens because people tend to remember the happy ending when they buy at a low price sell at a high price and the price go back to the previous level when they buy again when they buy when they bought last time they tend to make uh, buy decisions so when they buy make a buy decisions they will tend to make a sell decision again that's why a support resistance happens because of human psychology Another scenario would be there will be some institutional investor who, when institutional buy shares, they may not uh, buy at one price, or retail investor also may not buy at one price. They will always want to the biggest 
if at one time they place too many orders, it will push the price upward very fast. So what they would usually do is they place smaller lots across a longer period of time. So they accumulate, for example, they have said, I want to buy Maybank at 9 ringgit 50 cent. I want to acquire Maybank stock at 9 ringgit 50 cent across a three months period. So whenever the Maybank share price goes down to 9 ringgit 50 cent, they will buy 9 ringgit 45 cent, they buy 9 ringgit 55 cent, they buy. They don't want to push. Can you imagine if they want to buy 10,000 lots? They put the 10,000 lots in one day. If they place a buy order of 10,000 lots in one day, chances are they will push the Maybank share price through the roof. And would they want to buy a higher price? They probably don't. So what happened is they will spread their purchasing order throughout a period of time so they can accumulate the share the shares at the relatively uh, average price. Right. So this is what uh, support happens. Okay, so let me uh, go to the next slide. Now, let's resistance. Resistance is just the inverse of the support. Now, resistance level is a price level where the price tends to find resistance as it's going up. That means it fails to break through. So let's look at Maybank again. All right, if you look at Maybank, you see that the share price may find a resistance at this 10 ringgit to 10 ringgit 20 cent this zone. So it made the first attempt to break the new high in um, December 2013 and then make a second attempt, the third attempt and the fourth attempt and then it failed and it go go, go back down. Alright, on the fifth attempt. So resistance is the same. Now people have also have memory, have memory. When they see that they try to sell uh, they try when they see the share price try to break through this level and is unable to break through at this level people tend to make a sell decisions before that level so when people make a sell decisions and when more people make the same decisions then the share price is unable to break through in other words investor may believe that this is the fair price for them to exit the market All right this is a fair price for them as if right? some traders would if you've seen that there's enough traders who sell the shares at this price level and the more uh, the more times the price touches the level and unable to break through or break out, the stronger the resistance level. Okay, that means if you see this price touch this level for 10 times, it is a stronger resistance than a share price will touch another resistance level only two times. So in this case, you see the share price touch about the resistance level about five times in this case, about five times, and it's unable to break through. This is considered quite a, a relatively strong level for the price to go up. And unfortunately, after the share price attempt for the fifth time, it go back down and go down to all the way to eight ringgit thirty cent. In December 2014 so this is the same psychological level and how do we trade support resistance okay uh, in case you uh, in case you may not understand let me uh, explain again okay now I got myself did I get myself a pen all right so I'm using a pen. Oops. Hang on. Hang on, yeah. Oops. All right. Let me get myself a pen. Okay. Support is when a lot of people tend to buy at this price, this becomes a support. And when traders buy at this price and sell at this price, they have a good memory about making a profit here. And then when the share price go back down to this level, they have they have a pleasure memory and they buy again at this level. And they remember that last time they sell at this level, make money, so they sell again. And then when the price come back down, they buy again. So this is about uh, support and resistance. Why does it happen? So how do you trade a support and resistance? Now, if it's a range, 
if it's a range trading, in this scenario is range trading, uh, I, what I usually do is I buy after a bullish confirmation candles appears above support. I delete 10% of the range. And I sell before hitting the resistance, ideally 10% of the range. Now in this case, now my first example you see, there's a hammer plus a bullish engulfing candlestick pattern. Um, uh, today, I may not have time to go into a candle, uh, candlestick charting, but uh, basically, uh, you see the red candle, that is a hammer. And a hammer is a bullish reversal candlestick pattern. And a bullish engulfing is another strong bullish reversal pattern. So when you see a hammer plus a bullish engulfing pattern, chances are, it is a bullish confirmation candle. Now we usually only buy when there is a confirmation candle appears. Now when the price touch the support but is hovering around the support, usually I don't make any trading decisions. I will wait until another candle, a strong signal tells me that uh, the bull is coming back then I will go in and establish my long positions. Now in the first example, you see that there's a bullish confirmation a pattern appears above support and it's 10% of the range. So I make a buy decisions here, I buy. And I usually sell before it hit the resistance. In this case, I sell here, 10%. That means I don't sell at the support level. I, I don't sell at the resistance level. I sell 10% below the resistance level, 10% of the range. Uh, if when you look, when you, okay, let me find my pen again. Huh? So let's say this is the range, okay? This is 100% of the range. I usually sell 10% uh, for, for a range trading, all right? You, you get what I mean? And then buy 10% here, all right? Considering this is 100%, okay? Th this is what I mean, this is what I mean, okay? So I would buy after a confirmation signal. Now when the share price hover around support, I don't buy until a bullish confirmation candle appears. You know why? If you buy, chances are uh, there are, there could be some negative news come down, come out, and then it could break, it could break the support level, and you can you could lose money out of it. So it is safer for you to wait a little bit longer. Don't be so greedy, and wait until there's a confir bullish confirmation signal appears, then you only go in for a buy. Right? Excuse me. So let me give you another scenario. Now, when you see the share price go down near the support level, and what we do is we wait until a bullish confirmation candle appears. Now in this case, you see a bullish harami pattern. Now bullish, bullish harami is a reversal pattern, but it may not be as strong as uh, as strong as a signal compared to hammer plus a bullish engulfing. So in this case, I might be a bit more conservative. I, I might wait until the next bull candle appear. So the next opening, you see a long candle appear beside the bullish harami pattern. So then I will probably go for long positions. And I go in, I buy here, and then I sell 10% before I hit the resistance line. All right? This is my strategy to trade the support resistance zones. All right? And we, I usually put stop loss below the support level. So this is the stop loss level. If you look at the, the screen, you will see that that is the support stop loss level. Okay, I don't directly put the stop loss uh, in around, I don't put the stop loss on the support level, I put it below the support level, right? So in other words, when the share price go down, in, in the event that I'm wrong, go down, I would cut loss at the support level. I would close my trade at the support level and wait for the next profitable trade. Now it is okay for you to make mistakes, now it, uh, it is not a mistake, but, but uh, perhaps sometimes in trading, 
you don't win all the time. If you can have 60-70% winning probability, I, I think I would you would consider be an okay trader. All right. Some good traders can have 90 over percent uh, winning probability based on the years of experience. But if you're new, if you can get 60% winning probability, I guess you are already doing fine. All right. So when you don't earn, you learn. But it is sometimes it's very hard for people to uh, accept losses. And in trading, I always teach my students, you need, you don't have to be right, you just need to be profitable. And what does it mean? It means that most of the time, traders want, uh, most of the time, you want to be right. And when you want to be right, you don't want to cut loss because you want every trade to win. When you want every trade to win, sometimes when the price go down too fast, you are unable, you are resisted, you do refuse to cut loss, and you you can uh, exacerbate your losses because you want to be right. You don't need to be right. You just need to be profitable. And being you need to be profitable. Being profitable means that sometimes you have to cut your losses short. Right? When you see that your account is down 5%, you probably need to cut already. Right? You need to cut your losses short. Okay, I sidetracked for a little bit about money management, but anyway, uh, let me move on to support and resistance. I hope you learned something from my uh, brief sharing just now about money management. So now, what is a support resistance now? Round, sometimes round number also serve as a key psychological support and resistance level. What does it mean? For example, uh, a 10 ringgit as you have seen just now, a May Bank could, could serve as a, a, resist, a very strong resistance level. Because why? People tend to place their orders at round number, because round number is easy to remember. For example, I want to buy a uh, Maybank share at 8 ringgit and sell at 10 ringgit. So people tend to place the sell order at 10 ringgit. People tend to place a buy order at 8 ringgit. So because round number is easier to remember. So you sometimes the round number could serve as a psychological level, whether you trade shares, you trade uh, futures, or you trade currency. Now every, in every chart, the round number would appear as uh, invisible support and resistance, right? And support and resistance levels are highly volatile, and they are not a line. They are a zone. They are a zone. They are not a line. For example, eight ringgit may not be the support. It's, it, it could be in between seven ringgit ninety cent to eight ringgit ten cent. That zone is the support level. And they are highly volatile because a lot of traders place their orders around those levels and zones. So one simple rule you need to remember, you do not place orders directly at the support or resistance level. You wait for the price to move beyond that level and you make additions. If the price break out of the support level, right, you don't trade. You see when the price rebound at the support level and you see a, conf a bullish confirmation signal, only then you place your orders. Now, simple rule. Now, the reason you don't place order at support resistance level because breakout may happen. Okay, what is breakout? Now, breakout is the, pe the penetration of support resistance level is called breakout. Now, returning to the level of your support after breakout is called trader remorse or a false breakout okay I've seen some questions all right so I've seen some questions but uh, never mind let me go back to um, let me go back to my site and answer your questions later on okay so returning to returning to the uh, Let's look at this chart, okay? Now this could be a breakout. You see the circle that I, I, I did? This is a breakout. So when the price break through the support, the resistance level, this is called a breakout, okay? And when the share price go, go back down, below the resistance level is called a false breakout. That means the tr trader regret already, right? Maybe they misinterpreted the data. So the regret is called false breakout. And then you see things break out again. 
and the second breakout there's another resistance level and then it go back up now it is as I said earlier in the volume uh, module it's important for us to check the volume how to detect a force breakout a force breakout uh, can probably happens when the vo the the price break out of a certain resistance level but the volume is below the average volume now in the first example we see that uh, the volume is average which is fine it shows that the, the breakout could be reliable and the second time when it break out again we check the volume again to make sure that it's a good breakout and then we see that oh, there, there is just average volume and it could be reliable and in this case sometimes people will buy a breakout you can probably buy at the opening of the next candle and then uh, in this case you see that uh, it is very interesting to see the behavior and support and resistance level sometimes not sometimes most of the time when the resistance uh, when the share price break out of the resistance level the resistance will turn support all right in this case uh, let me go to my pen again hang on where is my cursor okay now in this case you see that the share price this is the uh, uh, resistant level this is the resistant level the price are able to break through but once the price break through this becomes support level the price uh, unable to break through this becomes support level until it break through again and then and break through again so this become uh, this once it break out of this resistance level then this level this zone become support and then it go up again so this is what we call support turns resistance now there are people who do break out break out trades now the key to remember is you need for, when I do break out trades I would wait until the candle is formed before I make my uh, purchasing uh, my, my, my order my decisions I will wait for the opening of the next candle I will wait for, until the candle fully break out I mean it's close already the opening of the next candle I will place an order and I will usually put my stop loss below the resistance below resistance level I will actually put my stop loss 60% uh, of the range that means if my range is here 100% Because I'm afraid of false breakout, I will usually put my stop loss at 60% of the of the range. That means my stop loss will be here. Okay, I will put here. Now in this case, I will be safe. If I buy, if I buy here, sorry. I, I don't have a mouse I'm using mouse pad to draw so my buy becomes very sexy so if I buy at this level my stop loss will be at this level my stop loss okay in this case I will be safe and I probably uh, have a risk to reward one to one and I probably sell somewhere here all right risk to reward one to one Okay, so this is some of the, the traits that I I use by just looking at support resistance. Of course, I don't only look at support resistance, I look at a few more indicators. Uh, by the way, I'm a price action trader. Um, I look at price action very uh, carefully. So this is another example of a role reversal when support turns to resistance. You see when the price is unable to break through resistance level, and once it breaks through, the price tends to find support at the resistance level. Okay, the resistance turns support. So this is a very great example to show you how, uh, what we mean by uh, the inter row reversal between support and resistance. All right. So I'm pretty much done with uh, moving average. I'm pretty much done with support resistance. I would want to move into a moving average. I've seen some questions. 
yeah but we'll entertain those questions uh, later on okay thank you thank you for your uh, questions moving average is the last chapter of tonight's uh, webinar so what is moving average Moving average is the average price of a security over a set amount of time. In other words, it is like a CGPA, okay? Uh, when your subject A get A, subject B get B, subject C get C, and your CGPA could be B, 3.3, all right? It could be 3.3. You get what I mean? So it is the average of all your subjects. So in this case, moving average is the average price of a security over a set amount of time. So there are three types of moving averages. The first type is what we call simple moving average, SMA. The second type is what we call linear weighted average. The third type is called the exponential moving average, the EMA. Now basically, it is the SMA that is used more frequently and followed by the EMA. And linear with the average, basically, I, I think very little people use, very few people use uh, linear with the average. Because the linear with the average has evolved into the exponential moving average. So what is simple moving average? Simple moving average is simple. When you have, let's say you have five days, and the closing price of first day is one ringgit 25 cents, second day is one ringgit 30 cents, third day is one ringgit 45 cents, fourth day is one ringgit 20 cents, fifth day is one ringgit 35 cents. The five day simple moving average is the summation of five days price divided by five. It's 1.31. That means the average price for five days is one ringgit 31 cents. As simple as that. Okay, sounds familiar? Let's move on. The second type is linear weighted average. Uh, this one uh, will need a little bit, bit more explanation. Now, it's the least common out of the three. It used to address the problem of the equal weighting because the problem with simple moving average is that uh, sometimes if you use too long, for example, you use 200 day moving average, uh, the historical price may become irrelevant. It may become more important and some people want to put more emphasis in the near uh, the near, near the nearest price for example they want uh, today's or uh, yesterday price become have a higher weightage is that sometimes when last time when I study in my high school some subject have a higher weighting like my Chinese subject has seven period times seven one my Basa Malaysia times four but the the Pernitikan just money only two period so so in this linear weighted average example, it just means that they want the nearest price to have more weightage, right? So later I'll show you, show you what I mean. I'll give you an example. Now it's calculated by taking the sum of all the closing prices over a certain period of time and multiplying them by the position of the data point and then dividing by the sum of the number of period. Now this sounds a bit confusing, but uh, let me show you an example, okay? Okay, the example is, let's say this is a five-day five, five day price. The five-day linear moving average is, you see the fifth day, one ringgit 35 cent at times five. The fourth day at times four. The third day at times three. The second, uh, the, the second day at times one. And the first day of the uh, at times one. So altogether, I divide by the summations of the 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 which is 15 and get the price so the average price for the 5 day linear with the average is 1 ringgit 35 cent you get what I mean okay let me go back all right so in the 5 day linear with the average the today's closing price is multiplied by 5 the yesterday by 4 so on until the first day is reached this number and then add the trigger divided by the sum of the multipliers Okay, that means the nearest price has a bigger weightage. The furthest price, that means it's very far away from today, has the smallest weightage. So it is used to address a problem that uh, the simple moving average uh, didn't just give an equal weightage to every, every price. This one gives more weightage to the recent price. But they feel that the linear weightage average 
it's not smooth. So they come up with a new moving average called exponential moving average EMA. I used to use EMA quite often when I do trading, but nowadays I don't use EMA uh, as often as I used be used to before. But anyway, uh, let's explain to you why is EMA. Now EMA is a weighted moving average. It uses a smoothing factor to place a higher weight on recent data points. It is more efficient than the linear weighted average. Now there are three steps to calculating EMA. Actually, you don't have to understand how the EMA is calculated, but uh, for academic purpose, I need to show you. In fact, I don't even know how to compute EMA until I need to uh, until I need to present this topic and go and study how to do uh, how to do calculation of EMA. All right. So there are three steps to calculate EMA. First is you need to calculate SMA. Second step is you need to calculate the weighted multiplier. So the exponential is equal to 2 divided by m plus 1. The n is the period. And then you get the EMA. The EMA formula is the closing price minus the EMA previous day times with the e, which is the multiplier, in the step 2 plus exponential previous day. Now, trust me, uh, a lot of traders also don't understand how to get EMA. They just know how to use. You don't have to understand how the it comes about. Uh, you, as, uh, as like you don't understand how the electricity works, but you just need to know how to turn on, switch on electric, uh, your electricity, all right? So it's the same. You may not need to understand the formula, but uh, you, you, you may not need to understand the formula so well, but you need to understand how to use the formula, all right? So, but for the sake of uh, uh, sharing or knowledge, let me share with you. Now, just now we see that I give you five days prices. From day one, one ringgit twenty-five cent. Day two, one ringgit thirty cent. Day three, one ringgit forty-five cent. Day four, one ringgit twenty cent. Day five, one ringgit thirty-five cent. And for this example, I need to include one more day, which is day six. I add in one more day, which is in red color, one ringgit fifty cent for day six. So first step is you need to calculate five day SMA. Now in our previous example, we have already known the five day FN SMA is one ringgit thirty-one cent. And the second step is calculate the weightage. So the weighting for E is we use five day period. So N is equal to five. So we get a weightage of two divided by six and we get 0 0.3333. So on day six, what is our EMA data? Our EMA data, our five day EMA data is equal to the closing price minus EMA previous day. In this case, we don't have EMA, EMA previous day. So we use SMA plus a uh, times with a multiplier which is 0 0.33 plus EMA previous day. So in this example, we use 1 ringgit 50 cent minus 1 ringgit 31 cent which is the uh, 5 day SMA times with the multiplier plus the EMA previous day which is the SMA. So then we get EMA for 5 day moving uh, exponential moving average is 1 ringgit 37 cent. Is that clear? Now let me repeat, you don't have to understand, you just need to know that exponential moving average has a recent, has more weightage to the recent price. In other words, exponential moving average works almost the same way like a linear weighted uh, moving average, just that exponential moving average is smooth, is has a smoothing factor which is the, which smooth out the graph. Lah. So you just need, you understand that exponential moving average is faster, and they give recent give more wastage, wastage to the recent price. So let's do a comparison in between uh, among the three moving average. All right. So in SMA, the five day SMA is one ringgit thirty one cent. The five day linear weighted average is one ringgit thirty one two cent. The exponential moving average, the first period they use SMA, and then for day six, you see that the SMA is equal, uh, the five day SMA is equal to 136. And then for uh, linear weighted average is 138. All right. And then we get the EMA is 137. So this is basically how you do SMA EMA. Now you don't need to understand uh, EMA formula. 
but you need to understand how to use it. So let me share with you how to use it. Now, basically, one characteristic of EMA is more responsive than the simple movie average. What do I mean? Now, if you look at this graph, uh, this is a DG, DG stock, and DG, DG is a fantastic uh, stock, especially in the eyes of the value investors. So, if you look at this case, you will notice that I have put two Indic uh, two indicators. One is a simple moving average, 20-day simple moving average. The other is a 20-day exponential moving average. Now, no, very little people, very few people use linear moving average. In fact, uh, in some of the charting software, you don't even have linear. You only have exponential and simple. So if you notice this period, when you see when the share price go up, okay, let me find my pen again. Oops. Okay, I see my pen. You see, when the share price move up here, you will notice that the blue line cross over the red line faster. Okay, and you see the blue line go up faster. Because why exponential moving average give more weightage to the recent price? That's why it moved faster. Okay, and you, when you see here, okay, when the share price come, go up, the exponential moving average move up faster than the simple moving average. Okay, when there's a big candlestick go up, the blue line go up faster. And of course, when there is a when there is a bearish candle you will see that the blue line go down faster. The same here, the blue line go up faster. So you notice that the EMA response to price changes faster than the SMA. Now does it mean that EMA is better if it's faster? Now, if you're a short-term trader, probably you will benefit from EMA more. But the, the pitfall of a faster faster moving average is that they may tend to have many false signals. Okay, but you need to understand the characteristic. You just remember the exponential moving average is more responsive than the simple moving average. Oops. Okay. Now, there are three major uses of moving average. Oops. Why, why is my slide not showing? Hang on, is my slide hang? All right. So the first is to identify current trends. The first use of the moving average is to identify current trends. Oops, how come? Just give me a minute. I don't know why it is not showing. Okay, now it is. So when the price is above the moving average, it just shows that it is a bullish trend. It's an uptrend. When the price is when the price is below the moving average, it is a bearish signal. The same. If your uh, GPA is below your CGPA, it just means that this sand you did very badly. If your GPA is higher than your CGPA, it just means that this sand you did well, so it's the same. It's the same uh, implications. So another method of determining momentum is to look at the order of the pair of a moving average. All right. When a short term average is above a longer term average, the trend is up. When a long term average is above a short term average, the trend is down. Now, what do I mean? I need to give you an example. Now, in this case, uh, we look at C A and B. Okay, you notice that the, the red line is a 20-day moving average. The blue line is a 50-day moving average. The green line is a 100-day moving average. The, the other green line is 200-day moving average. When you see the line when the shorter period, when the shorter period moving average 
and in this case it's 20 day is below the longer period in this case it's 50 day 100 day 200 day it just means that it is downtrend so this is what I mean a shorter period is above the longer period that means when a 20 day moving average is above the 50 day moving average it just means that uh, it could be an uptrend so and what is perfect order? Perfect order is when every moving average are arranged in a very nice fashion like this. They are arranged in according to their period. A 20 day, after that 50 day, 100 day, 200 day. It's, it is a very strong trend. When you see moving average is very a bit messy, it just means that the trend is going sideways. So in this case, when 20 day shorter period is below the longer period, it, it, it just means that it's a very strong downtrend. The second use of a moving average is to identify trend reversal. You probably wonder if the first use is to identify a current trend. You may not need to look at the moving average to know that it's an uptrend. You just need to see a series of lower, uh, a higher high and higher low, then you can tell it's an uptrend. But second use is more important is to identify a trend reversal. Now, the moving average trend reversal are formed in two main ways. The first way is when the price moves through a MA, the moving average. Now, in this case, you see when the share price moves below the moving average, then it just means that it is a bearish signals. Okay, so you see how the trend reverses once the price breaks below the important moving average, SMA 500, right? It just means that the, tr the trend is reversing. It's reversing downward in this example. And the second way is when the two moving average cross over. Now in this example, I use two period. First period I use 50 day moving average. The second period I use is 100 day moving average. Uh, this stock is Kuala Lumpur Kapong, KLK. And if you look at the price, you will notice that when the shorter period, which is a 50 day moving average in this example, cross over the 100 day moving average, example, the shorter period uh, cross over from the bottom, it just gives you a bullish signal. So in this case, you identify that the trend would have changed. In this example, KLK example, the price is consolidating in between 20 ringgit 80 cent to about 22 ringgit and suddenly it break out of that level and then you see the moving average shorter period moving average cross over the 100 day moving average then it just tells you that the trend has changed it is now an uptrend so notice how the short term moving average crossing above the long-term moving average signals the beginning of an uptrend. All right. So let's recap. The first use of moving average is to identify the current trend. The second use of moving average is to identify the trend reversal. And the third use is to identify support and resistance. Now sometimes the moving average can serve as good support and resistance. Now in this case, the 50-day moving average serve as a very strong support for DGD share. You see, the share trade in a very nice fashion. When it touch, when it touch the 50-day moving average, it is supported at that level and, and it break the breakthrough. Okay, so common moving average. What are some moving average people use? Now, I've seen people use different moving average, but mainly uh, a few Moving average are more common. First is 200 day moving average. It is a it means a one year average because in, in one year we have five five trading days in a week. In one year minus all the holiday we get plus minus about 200 day trading day. So if you use 200 day moving average, it just means it's a one year average price. The secondly, people look at 100 day moving average, which is a half year average. We have 50 day moving average, quarter year average. And we have 20 day moving average, which is about one month average. And we have 10 day moving average, which is two weeks average. All right, 
So these are some of the common moving average that people use. So the question is, can you use different than this? Of course you can. I've also seen some traders who advocate 20 day, 40 day. And it's fine. It depends on the strategy. But it's very odd for people to use uh, 3 day, 3 day and 7 day. Uh, this would be a bit not as, not as common. So if you follow what other people do, now in trading, uh, you just need to follow the sentiment. You need to follow what the other traders are doing. Now, if every traders are looking at support and resistance, you would want to look at support and resistance because when a lot of people are buying at that price, you want to buy at that. You want to not to miss out the boat because if you do things a little bit, uh, if you don't follow the market sentiment, you might be stopped out. So if people are buying at 50-day moving average, you might want to feel that it could be an important support level. Okay, now keep in mind a few things when you come to moving average. The greater the time period, the less sensitive the moving average to the price movement. That means a 200-day moving average is less sensitive than the 10-day moving average to the recent price movement. Okay, it's just like when you have, uh, when you talk about CGPA, when you have 100 subjects, when your new subject, your 101 subject get A, it may not move the CGPA too much. If you only have two subjects, if your next subject get A, you can move up your CGPA significantly. This is what it means. All right, the second point is, if the MA period is too short, it will have too many false signals because it's too sensitive to data. So it gives you a lot. You see the moving average keep crossing over, then it can give you a, a lot of false signals. Now, a long MA period will often lag a little bit. Uh, MA is a lagging indicator. Lagging means what? Uh, lagging indicator is just, uh, in, uh, it means that it usually lags behind the price actions because a moving average can only be calculated after the price shows on the chart, it is it has less predictive element. Now there are some indicators who are leading, a little bit leading in nature. For example, candlestick is a leading, it's a slightly better leading indicator. All right. Now MA signals are more effective during a trend than sideways because sideways you can see a lot of uh, indicate uh, a lot of moving average crossing each other. In the trend, you will see that. There's a less signal and it often proved to be more reliable. Now, if you really want to use a uh, moving average in a sideways trend, it's better to use longer period. Now, next is how to trade moving average. Now, I teach you so many theories, so academic terms uh, will not help you unless I teach you how to use. Now, I will just give you one a simple strategy. Now. In this case, we just trade, we just buy when the price touch the support. Now let's take DG as an example. Now you see that in this scenario, in this example, the price cross over the moving average from the bottom and it could mean that the trend has changed because when price cross over the moving average, it means that the trend is reversed. Remember, this is the second use of the moving average. So when this happens, it may show you that the trend is changed. Then you can buy here, and then it sell somewhere, and then see the price touch the moving average again. Now you may not want to chase after the price, and you want to buy when the price is low. So when you buy, you buy when the price touch the moving average. And then you sell somewhere there. And then sometimes when you see the price touch back again, you buy. You see when the price cross over MA, and maybe it's time for you to sell. It could show us that the trend has changed. So in this example, you could have purchased maybe three times. And then possibly you can sell two times. So it's up to you. In this case, um, let me find my pen again. Oops, how come my plan is not showing? 
Hang on there. In this case, I do not sell here because it is a shadow. It didn't close below. It didn't close below the moving average. Uh, that means the when the price go down, it is supported upwards, and it's, it didn't close below the moving average. So I don't see it as a support, uh, as a sell signal. When I see uh, this this area, maybe I I will sell. Maybe I will sell. Okay, I may sell here or you may sell here. It's up to you. So how do you trade? You just buy. When the price is touching the support, uh, the sub, the moving average and rebound, you can buy there. In this example, uh, you buy here, okay? When another bullish candle appear, and then you probably buy somewhere here, okay? And you buy when the price cross above moving average. So these are some simple strategies that trader use when it comes to. Uh, simple use of a uh, moving average as a trading strategies okay so I have I only have 15 minutes left for Q&A I basically done with a fair overview of a brief overview of moving average support system volume and chart structures now I would want to spend the last 15 minutes of the webinar for the questions and answers sessions Wow I've seen a lot of questions coming in from uh, you all um, well, I may not be ans may, may not be able to answer all, but I will try my best to answer all. Uh, while waiting for you to write your questions, I will want to launch a poll. Okay, launch a poll. Let's have something fun. Poll must be. Do you see my poll? Okay. While waiting for you to type in questions. Now, on where do you think KLCI will go tomorrow? Is it up more than 10 points, down more than 10 points, or in between? Probably in between 20 points. We have 25% of you voted. We just spent another one more minute to wait for all of you to vote. Okay, we have only have 68% of you voted. Or where are the rest of you? Where are 22% of you? Are you not on the screen? Okay, I may want to close my poll now. The rest of you maybe don't know, don't know where, where we, I want to share my result. Okay, did you see the result? We have. 53% of you uh, voted that it will hover in between 20 points. 90% uh, of you think it will be a bull market tomorrow, and 8% of think you of you think it will be a bear market tomorrow. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your time, and we would uh, I will need to close the poll so that uh, you all can I can answer your questions. All right. Let's go to the questions and answer sessions. All right. First question is. Uh, by the way, by the way, we will be giving out two mysterious gifts to the most participative uh, persons attendees on the webinar. So if you ask me a lot of good questions, uh, the gift will go to you, all right? And you can redeem the mysterious gift at the Bursa Investor Education Workshop this weekend. All right. First question is, how can we know when is support, is, when is support, and when is resistance? Okay. Uh, by Miss Lee, I suppose. So, when, how do you know when when is support, when is resistance? You will know it when you look at the chart. When you see that the support is the price is supported at a certain zone, certain price zone, for more than two three times, then you know that this is support level. Okay. 
Okay, some people they reference the new high or new low as the support. Okay, if you look at short term trading. All right, next question is I have a question on the time frame you use to determine the support and resistance. Okay, how do you know which time frame to be used in it? Of course, um, there's a very good question. How do you know which time frame to use for to determine support resistance? Well, if you are a long term trader, uh, you would want to look at daily time frame. If you are a short term trader, if you are intraday trader, you may want to look at hourly time frame. If you are scalper, you may want to look at a five minute time frame. All right. Uh, of course, the shorter the time frame, the more technical skills you need for you to succeed in your trading. And it's more challenging. Of course, if you are a newbie, I would advise you to use daily time frame to look at support resistance. It's more reliable. And when you are more advanced, excuse me, you can go to a smaller time frame, like hourly chart. Or a five minute chart. All right. Either way, you can draw. You can reference the support resistance. Of course, if you use a, a mini chart, it could be a little bit uh, not so reliable. All right. Thank you very much for your questions. Next question is: Support level is an indicator on when to buy. While resistance level is an indicator on when to sell. And uh, what is the rationale behind in selling the stock 10% behind the resistance level? Well, uh, selling, uh, let's address your first question first, uh, Mr. Uh, 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 Terry. Now, support level is not an indicator for you to buy. Support level is an indicator to tell you that the price is supported at that level, in other words, there are a lot of buyers, a lot of traders, a lot of investors who are willing to buy the security at that price range. Okay, and when, but there are some people who trade the support level. For example, it's not all support levels I trade. I only trade the support level when it's a very strong uh, range or it's a very strong signal at support or at the moving average. So it it may not be a it may not be a buy signal unless it is uh it's up to you okay it gives you indicator but it may not give you buy signal so it's up to you whether you want to buy or want to sell I personally will not want to buy all the time at support level I will only want to screen out more reliable trade and uh, more more reliable range and then I will only buy at those levels. And what is the rationale behind 10%? This, this is just my trading strategies. I like the trade because I don't want it to hit the, uh, the resistance level before I sell. I usually sell before I hit the resistance level. So as a point of reference, I teach you my strategy, a very simple strategy of mine, which is how to do range trading. Okay, I sell before I hit the resistance. If you, you can choose not to use my strategy. So it's up to you. But so far, I, 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 I realized that as uh, when the range is strong enough, it served me well this strategy for me to make consistent profit out of it. It's not every range I trade, it's just that when the range is strong, when the support level is solid, it's very hard to break through, I will tr trade the 10% uh, ten percent range and ten sell before before you hit. All right? Hi, will we get a recorded link for this video? Yes, you may get. Okay. Another question is, can support be resistance? Yes, as I said earlier, uh, support can turn to become resistance once uh, it is breakthrough and resistance can also turn to become support. It's interchange. Now, next question is, how does moving average aid us in choosing the entry and exit point? Can you give us an example? I believe I have given you an example uh, in the last, this, this question was asked very early, so I suppose I answered your question already. I give you an example of how you use moving average in entry and exit. Can we set EMA chart nexus? If yes, how? Oh, I've just shown you how to, uh, how I've just shown you that an EMA in chart nexus. You can use EMA in chart nexus. Uh, how how to do it? If I remember correctly, is you go to indicators, uh, you click into moving average. You click edit, and then you check the exponential column, the, the box. You check the exponential box, and then it will turn to become exponential moving average. If you uncheck, 
the exponential, the unchecked exponential box, it will be a simple moving average. All right. So next question is, can give some time to snap the slide before you are going to the next slide. Huh? <laughs> uh, no worries, I will give you uh, the I will give you the uh, recording later on for you to review. Next question: What's the difference between a closing price and an adjusted closing price? Uh, very good questions, but it is a little bit uh, technical. I uh, will not be able to answer it uh, today. Okay. Next question is. What is the common MA that you use in your trading? I most when I I mainly use four moving average. I use 200 day moving average, 100 day moving average, 500 day, uh, 50 day moving average, 20 day moving average. When I do short term trading, I use 50 and 20. When I use I do long term investment, I use 100 and 200. But in general, I look at four. Four moving average, I also look at because I want to know whether the price break through the 20 day. Or break through a 50 day and in which zone is it breaking through if it's breakthrough 200 day that means it's a strong reversal signal to me so I use this for moving average I used to do 20 at 4 I used to use 20 at 40 when I look at the crossover but now I no longer look at 24 they use 20 50 uh, and also I look at 4 I look at all 4 uh, thanks Stephen for the uh, questions now next question I have heard of Bollinger Band's technique in technical analysis, measuring the tightness of the band to forecast a breakout. What do you think of that technique? I, uh, that's a very good question, but for the uh, benefit of all uh, the attendees today, uh, Bollinger Band is an indicator that measures the volatility of a pair. In other words, it, sh it shows a two standard deviation away from the uh, from the 20 day moving average but it is a bit more technical I do not want to go to Bollinger Band but um, I used Bollinger Band before and I have a trading strategy involved I use multiple bands and probably Ivan you will want to uh, uh, meet me up for Yamta I will share with you how to use Bollinger Band uh, or you meet me next I will go to a Busa Investor Education Workshop I will, I will spend some time with you to share with you how to use uh, Bollinger Band. Basically, it works. Uh, it works. Okay, but uh, not uh, not indicators 100% correct. But uh, Bollinger Band is one of the uh, the more popular indicators. So next question: Can I have your PowerPoint? Yes, you may have. Uh, I will send you a recording. Now, next question is: If if I compare Bollinger Band with MA, which one is more reliable? Wow, this one is very hard to answer. I you, I I cannot tell which one is more reliable. But so far, I use moving average more than I use Bollinger Band. But uh, I wouldn't say moving average is more reliable, just that moving average has more people looking at it. Uh, Bollinger Band uh, also got a lot of people looking at it. Uh, both are also uh, quite re quite popular. I wouldn't say reliable, but I would say popular. But I can't give a comparison which one is more reliable unless you do a bet. You know, some, some security is different. Huh? Sometimes, uh, let's say public bank. Public bank, you use Bollinger Band, it's more reliable. You, use, you do a bad testing public bank, Bollinger Band maybe 90% of the time it gives you good uh, good signal. But you use Bollinger Band or May Bank, it could be disastrous. So it's very hard to compare a Bollinger Band and uh, different indicators. There are some indicators who suit this security. There are some moving average who suit this security. You know, that's different. So you, it's, it's very hard for me to say which one is more reliable. All right. So next question. How to expect the number of times the candle touches the resistance and do not break out. Uh. Or oh, this one, uh, very hard to say. You you don't don't expect uh, But in general, the rule of thumb, the more times it touch the zone, the level, the stronger the support and resistance are. That means if there's a, the support when there's support level, when the price touches the support level three times, and unable to break through. Compared to a price that touched the support level 20 times, but an error will break through, guess which one is more strong? Of course, it's 20 times more strong. So, it just gives you an indication. I usually trade a strong zone. I don't trade a very weak. Three times one, very hard for me to trade. So, uh, what is the most accurate technical analysis method? Well, I can't answer that. Because 
uh, technical analysis tool just give you an indications. For example, you ask me which you drive Honda faster or drive, drive Vios faster. It depends on the driver. Okay, if the driver is good, you know, certain element is a lot of things are involved. So I can't do comparison which one is more accurate. But uh, I've seen when I first started using technical analysis, my chart got Bollinger Band, got RSI, got Stochastic. Can you imagine a LAM2 oscillator together? Got Stochastic, got, uh, got five moving average, got Ichimoku, uh, a lot of things. I've got the ADX for me to understand the strength of the trend, got the parabolic uh, SAR stop and reversal. So I used a lot of indicators and it confused me. Right? Some indicators give me buy signals, some indicators give me sell signals. So, but at the end of the day, I realized that having learned so many indicators has no use uh, and it will confuse you. And I think it will be best if you go to, to simplicity. At the present moment, I only look at, during a very strong trend moment, a very strong trend, I will look at the ADX average directional index for me to gauge the strength of the trend. Uh, and then, but basically, in general, I only look at four moving average and one stochastic as the oscillator. For the rest of the time, I, I will only use that indicator when I feel that I want to see whether the volume is good, whether the trend is strong or not. So I use very simple. I, I'm the, I look at price action more than I look at indicators. All right. So there's no, which one is more accurate. Huh? It depends on you who know how to master the skills of using the tools. Next question is, why wow, it's 10 o'clock already. So uh, for those of you who have uh, 10 o'clock already, but I still have a lot of questions to answer. So please don't type anymore. So I would, so for those questions coming in after 10 o'clock, I won't be able to entertain anymore uh, because I have an early uh, appointment tomorrow. So I, and it's only until 10 o'clock as well. Anyway, next question is, if 20 days moving average cross 100 day moving average, but does not touch 200 day moving average, is it the signal or change of trend? Now, if you use 20 day and 100 day, it could signal a trend, but it may not be as strong as if the 20 day moving average cross 200 day. So when a 20 day cross 200 day, it would be a stronger trend reversal signal than the 20 day cross over 100 day. Hope I answer your questions. Next question is, to identify a volume average, do you use 30-day average or more? Yeah, I use 30 days average or more. Uh, next question is, however, the support or resistance since we are determined after the stock market end, we can hardly determine what happened in the future, right? Wait, wait, wait. I don't really understand your question. Huh? Let me reread. However, the support or resistance since we are determined after the stock market end, we can hardly determine what happened in the future, right? Uh, I think wow. Well, I think I briefly understand what you mean. I think you're trying to ask me how reliable is technical analysis. Well, I would say that it's very hard to predict the future, but uh, it gives you more uh, predictability when it comes to anticipating the uh, the next uh, price movement. Technical analysis will not be 100% correct. If you can hit 80% accuracy, you are already godlike. I would say. So it just gives you an indication that uh, the market could be oversold now, the market could be overbought now. It gives you alert that it is a little bit, uh, you need to be aware of this thing, all right? The trend of the momentum of the trend is losing out now, you know? So it gives you indication, you know, it may not be uh, accurate all the time, okay? It determines how you, how to use the indications to form your strategies. Now, any technical analysis software is free on market. It must easy learn for beginner, all right? So the next, uh, of course, some software charge you money, but uh, I use ChartNexus, which is free one, give you three year data, okay? If you want to know, go to www.chartnexus.com. Uh, by the way, I'm not their reseller. I don't gain anything if you go and use their software. But if you want to use longer period data, you need to pay. I think 10-year data you need to pay. So may I know what are the factors that cause price to change? Now, this is a very good question. What factors cause price to change? The 
primarily there are a lot of factors that can cause price to change for example speculations news but the primary factor is supply and demand because why the news can affect the supply and demand for example a quarterly earnings report released and the quarterly earnings report is lower than the analyst forecast then it could mean that the company is not doing well so when the company is not doing well it would give a create a very negative sentiment then the people would start to sell the shares so so it is supply and demand so when the quarterly earnings report is bad then it would mean that more people are unwilling to buy the share and people want to sell so it, and then the demand for the share drop so it all go back to supply and demand stock market exchange board is a secondary market so it's like an auction market when there are more buyers the share price go up when there are more sellers the share price go down it's more on share supply and demand okay the next question is there any website or blog that will draw all the SMA LMA or EMA after every day or stock market oh, all software can draw for you you don't have to draw yourself all right all chart, charting software will draw it for you you just need to click you want 20 day 100 day 50 day or 200 day just now you suggest that sell before the resistance but why don't we sell after the peak 10% range after the peak oh, oh of course you may but if you hit the resistance rebound then you will lose out you know I usually sell uh, before it hit the resistance because I'm afraid if it can't break through resistance then it go back down I will lose the opportunity all right that's me next question stop loss set 60% will it be too risky I think stop loss set 60% in my opinion I, I'm, I think uh, Mr. Uh, Gi Hong, you're referring to my range trading strategy, right? I believe in a range trading strategy, the appropriate put of a stop loss is very important. But if it is not a hard rule, it's just a soft guideline. I usually set 60% of the range, but it's not a hard rule. For you, if you feel that it's too risky, then you, stop, you set 80% of the range. It's up to you. But of course, if you set 80% of the range, uh, you may tend to lose more when, it, when you are wrong. Okay, I think the level where you put stop loss is you feel that when it hit that level, you're probably wrong. So in my opinion, range trading, uh, to avoid a false breakout, the stop loss level has to be put at a very appropriate level. In my opinion, 60% from my experience is just good enough, right? If you put too far, you might want to incur more losses. If you put too near, then it will, you have a lot of you have you will sort out very frequently all right uh, so it's all up to you you can put 70% you can put 80% all right next question is if the price is break over resistance level should we continue to hold the stock or just sell it all right uh, of course it's up to you if you believe in uh, you believe in the long-term future of the stock of the company then you can hold it if you just want for quick profit then you can sell it Next question is among support resistance moving average indicator chart pattern candlestick pattern field monetary retracement either wave which one or more of it do you think are useful along your trading experience? I would say that uh, I, I I myself are not expert in everything. Uh, in Ilia wave theory I know the basic but I, I may not be a practitioner of Ilia wave. Fibonacci retracement I use but I may not uh, an avid user. Candlestick pattern is I look at it a lot. Chart pattern, I also look at it a lot. Chart patterns is like the uh, head and shoulders, double top, double bottom, car and handle, triangle pattern, wedges pattern, and so on. I, I use a lot. Uh, indicators, I use oscillator uh, most of the time. Moving average, I see. Support and I see. So in my experience, uh, these are some of the things that I use. Fibonacci, I don't use that much until I only use Fibonacci when I can find the support resistance. When there's a price, when there's a point in time where I can't find, there's no visible support or resistance on the chart, whether it is a very strong trend, upward or downward, then I would draw support. I would draw the Fibonacci retracement pattern. That's for me, lah. So, uh, which one is useful? I think all are applicable. It depends on which one you are more uh, effective at using it, are more professional at using it. 
All right. Next question. I find that sometimes the closing price is different than the opening price the next day. Like Monday close two ringgit ninety five cent, but open three. Ringgit. Yeah, this call. That's what we call gap. When the opening price is different than the closing price. For example, in your case, Monday close two ninety five. Tuesdays open three ringgit. It is a gap up. Okay, it's a gap up. That's what we call gap. In Western candlestick, it's called gap. In a Japanese candlestick, it's called a win. Sorry, sorry. In the Japanese candlestick, it's called gap. In Western candlestick, it's called a window. When is a bursa investing wusha and how I can register? All right, I will tell you how to register later. It is this Saturday. I make sure you come. Or uh, what is the hammer you mentioned just now? All right. The hammer I mentioned just now is a candlestick pattern. It's a bullish reversal candlestick pattern, which you will learn about hammer when you go to the Bursa uh, Investor Education Workshop this Saturday. All right, make sure you go, Mr. Yap. All right, it's a very fruitful session. Thank you. And if newbie wish to start, how should we do? Uh, if you want to start, first thing is you need to acquire more knowledge in trading and investing first. Uh, having under having understand about support system moving average may not make you a great trader yet. So what you need to do is to read more news, read more uh, financial report, uh, read more charts, and get yourself understand what is the procedures of uh, setting a, a, a stock broking account and how to get started before you get into it, all right? It takes you four years, like my, uh, like my uh, mentor always say, uh, if it takes you four years to get a degree, what makes you think that a two-day class can make you good in trading. Uh. It, trading is a lifelong journey. Of course, if you want to start, you can go to the stockbroking to open account, but don't be too too ambitious. After you learn today, you go in tomorrow, 50,000, back one stock. Uh, don't do, do that yet. Uh. Until you're able to make, uh, before you can make 20% return a year, you meet, please learn how to make 5% return a year first. Right? It takes steps. Next question, how do you develop a strategy analysis using a method of analysis you know? Uh, how do I develop? I I use trial and error, trial and error, and and I lose money, then I know which one is more, which one suits me for which stock. All right, so it comes from experience. All right, basically I have answered all questions except those who say thank you and when can I get a slide, which I have answered before. So hope you uh, learned something today. Today we have uh, quite a, not a bad turnout, all right? So I'm done with the question and answer. Thank you very much. But now we are going to the mysterious gift sessions now. Today we have um, people who participated a lot in our question and answer sessions. And uh, I will want to uh, reward people who are very active in, ans in asking me questions. All right. So let me pick two lucky winners. The first lucky winner is let me see uh, who is more active. Is Mr. Terry Lim. All right. Congratulations. You are the one of the most active participants in our webinar today. So you deserve a mysterious gift. All right. The second one would be Li Zirui. Is it a Li Zirui? Is it a guy or girl? All right. Anyway, you are the second winner of the webinar. All right. So for both of you, how can you redeem your mysterious gift? What would that be? You can redeem it at the next Bursa Investor Education Workshop. So in the Bursa Investor Education Workshop, you will learn one thing called the Introduction to Candlestick Charting. But I heard from the organizer, which is Bursa Malaysia, that it is almost full house. So you better uh, go to Bursa Marketplace to register. So the date and time is 20 of February 2016. The time is 1 to 5 o'clock. They also have a morning sessions, but we will only give out the gift at the end of the afternoon sessions, which means at about five o'clock, we'll give Terry Lim at Lee Zirui. Uh, and 
you can redeem the gift at the Bursa Malaysia uh, the theater room all right for those of you who want to know who are not winners today I would also encourage you to go to the introduction to candlestick charting the Bursa investor education workshop of course where you can find uh, the information you can go to Bursa marketplace.com let me repeat you can go to Bursa marketplace.com maybe I can write it in the chat box later uh, hang on yeah let me write in the chat box later you can uh, uh, register for BIEW at www.bursamarketplace.com you go to events you go to the events tab then you look for Bursa investor education workshop then you'll be able to find the, you will be able to register yourself. So for those two winners, if you want to redeem and give, go to the introduction of candlestick charting. For those of you who are asking what is a hammer, what is a bullish and galvin pattern, what is the harami pattern, go to candlestick charting, then you will understand how to read the candlestick pattern. What does the candlestick tell you about this particular company? All right, it is this Saturday from morning until evening. So there are two sessions. The first session will be a repeat of the last session, and then the second session is new. It's called Introduction to Candlestick Charting. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. We have spent one hour and 45 minutes uh, sharing with you about uh, technical analysis. It's 50, uh, overshoot by 15 minutes. But if you want to contact us, you can contact uh, Facebook slash MyLifeChan or Twitter, or you can uh, contact us by our phone number or our website. Or you can follow me on my Facebook to know about the market update and uh, facebook.com slash shenchu7. All right. If you have anything, write to me, chunxian at malachin.com. All right. Uh, thank you very much for your, thank you very much for your uh, time. And I see a lot of positive feedback uh, for these sessions. And uh, thank you very much for your compliments. And uh, I wish you uh, happy trading and yeah, have a pleasant rest of the day. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time.